This current scenario was not in the script. And it was not like you change the channel and, and it's something else. It was actually happening to us. I mean, it's just unacceptable. Everybody says Kenya is the beacon of stability, beacon of peace and everything. We're seeing it going down the drain. Kenya has been engulfed in turmoil since a controversial election in December. More than a thousand people have been killed, hundreds of thousands have been driven from their homes, and billions of dollars in business has been lost. I'm Jeffrey Gettleman, a reporter for the New York Times, and I wanted to explore another side of this story and see how the country's middle class was coping with this crisis. We need for this country to be stable for us to make our ends meet. Kenya is a business nation. We are people who work. We need to go back to work. Fanish Nyangai just started her own marketing company in Nairobi. She had recently laid off some of her staff because of the gloomy business climate. You need to just have an image you understand. You can best describe to them. And tell you them. cannot plan when marketing. We, we, we need plans. You know, you're, you're talking to your clients and, and nobody can give you dates. And when nobody can give you dates, that means there's no money coming in. There are no projections. Kenya is home to a large and vibrant middle class, something that separates it from other African countries struggling with internal conflict. Business people, doctors, lawyers, their voices have hardly been heard amid the chaos. And as the uneasy weeks turn into months and the losses mount, they are frustrated and frightened. First thing, of course, is personal safety. When you don't feel, you don't have a sense of security, you feel you can be the subject of a mob at any time. And that mob does not know what your political affiliation is. Wambua Kalonzo is a lawyer who broke with his ethnic group, the Kamba, to vote for Raila Odinga, the opposition candidate for president and a member of the Luo ethnic group. It was clear that they were standing for change, the change that many people were yearning for. Unlike Wambua, most people in Kenya vote along ethnic lines. Most Luos voted for Mr. Odinga, and most Kikuyus voted for Kenya's president, Mwai Kabaki, a Kikuyu. Mr. Kabaki ended up winning the election, but there was widespread evidence that it was rigged. The outrage that followed took on a distinctly ethnic flavor. Kenya has struggled with this before, but never has the country been so destabilized, with neighbor turning on neighbor. I, I, I don't identify myself really as a Kamba. Of course, I am proud to be one, uh, but I, I do not identify myself as one. Many white-collar Kenyans define themselves by their profession as much by their ethnic group. Some of them see ethnic identity as dangerous. So we have you know, been speaking to our staff to make sure that as they converse in the office environment, they do not talk in their vernacular because it's not good, it's not going to promote a cohesion that we, we would like to see at the workplace. George Mbagua is the chief financial officer at a growing company in Nairobi. He is trying to promote healing in his office and at church. At the church on Sunday, standing outside, and as people you come and you greet each other, and then you start asking, how do you think about this? The few words you say at that time can actually change a person from a mourning situation to a proactive situation of vigor of wanting to sort this thing out. If I have uh, that heart of looking at other people positively, on the other hand, I'm concerned about my own security. Right. It's a mixed kind of feeling because some moments you feel like you want to revenge and, and be and you also be a tribesman as, as it were. Over these years we've been taught and it's in our system that we are Kenyans. And all of us have accepted we are Kenyans. When we go out, all of us have got different friends. In fact, some of our best friends are not even from our own tribes. So but there is an older generation which is still steeped in the tribal identity. Thing. But Wambua, along with others, doesn't see this primarily as an ethnic conflict. He says it's political, and people are furious because they believe the election was stolen. There's a sense of injustice, and this is what I've, everybody is saying. Peace, everybody is calling for peace, peace, peace. And one of the foundations of peace 
is truth and justice. If you do not have these two to sustain that peace you're calling for, there'll certainly be no peace. Kenya's professionals have a lot to lose. Their country once seemed so promising, and now it seems so uncertain.